Frederick Augustus Washington Bailey was born into slavery on the eastern shore of the Chesapeake Bay in Talbot County, Maryland in 1818. The exact date of his birth is unknown, although he later chose to celebrate his birthday on February 14th. Douglas was of mixed race, which likely included Aboriginal American as well as African and European. He was given his name by his mother, Harriet Bailey. Douglas's mother died when he was about 10. Douglas was given to Lucretia Old, wife of Thomas Old, who sent him to serve Thomas's brother, Hugh Old, in Baltimore, Maryland. When Douglas was about 12, Hugh Old's wife, Sophia, started teaching him the alphabet. Douglas learned to read from white children in the neighborhood and by observing the writings of men with whom he worked. Douglas continued secretly to teach himself how to read and write. In 1837, Frederick met and fell in love with Anna Murray, a free black woman in Baltimore about five years older than he. On September 3, 1838, Frederick successfully escaped by boarding a train from the newly merged Philadelphia Wilmington and Baltimore Railroads. Young Frederick reached Havre de Grace, Maryland, in the northeast corner of the state along the southwest shore of the Susquehanna River, dressed in a sailor's uniform provided to him by Anna Murray. He carried identification papers that he had obtained from a free black sailor. Frederick crossed the wide Susquehanna River by the railroad's steam ferry, then continued by train across the state line to Wilmington, Delaware. From there, because the rail line was not yet completed, he went by steamboat along the Delaware River further northeast to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania an anti-slavery stronghold, and continued to New York City. His entire journey to freedom took less than 24 hours. Once Frederick had arrived, he sent for Anna Murray to follow him north to New York. They were married on September 15, 1838. At first, they adopted Johnson as their married name to divert attention. The couple settled in New Bedford, Massachusetts. After meeting and staying with Nathan and Mary Johnson, they adopted Douglas as their married name, he asked Johnson to choose a suitable surname. Johnson had been reading The Lady of the Lake and suggested Douglas after the principal character in the poem. Frederick thought of joining a white Methodist church, but from the beginning he was disappointed when he saw it was segregated. Later he joined the black Methodist Episcopal Zion Church, which counted among its members Sojourner Truth and Harriet Tubman. He became a licensed preacher in 1839 and this helped him hone his oratorical skills. In 1840, Douglas delivered a speech in Elmira, New York, then a station on the Underground Railroad. Frederick also joined several organizations in New Bedford. At another meeting, Douglas was unexpectedly invited to speak. After telling his story, Douglas was encouraged to become an anti-slavery lecturer. In 1843, Douglas joined other speakers in the American Anti-Slavery Society's 100 Conventions Project, a six-month tour at meeting halls throughout the eastern and midwestern United States. During this tour, slavery supporters frequently accosted Douglas. At a lecture in Pendleton, Indiana, an angry mob chased and beat Douglas before a local Quaker family, the Hardys, rescued him. His hand was broken in the attack. It healed improperly and bothered him for the rest of his life. Douglas set sail on the Cambria for Liverpool, England, on August 16, 1845. He traveled in Ireland as the Irish potato famine was beginning. Douglas spent two years in Ireland and Britain, where he gave many lectures in churches and chapels. Douglas remarked that in England he was treated not as a color, but as a man. During this trip, Douglas became legally free, as British supporters led by Anna Richardson and her sister-in-law Ellen raised funds to buy his freedom from his American owner, Thomas Old. Many supporters tried to encourage Douglas to remain in England, but with his wife still in Massachusetts and three million of his black brethren in bondage in the United States, he returned to America in the spring of 1847. After returning to the U.S., Douglas started publishing his first abolitionist newspaper, The North Star, from the basement of the Memorial AME Zion Church in Rochester, New York. The church and the North Star vigorously opposed the mostly white American colonization society and its proposal to send blacks back to Africa, specifically the Republic of Maryland. This and Douglas's later abolitionist newspapers were mainly funded by English supporters who gave Douglas 500 pounds to use as he chooses. On March 12, 1859, Douglas met with radical abolitionist John Brown, George the Baptist, and others at, at William Webb's house in Detroit, Michigan, to discuss emancipation. Douglas met Brown again when, when Brown visited his home two months before leading the raid on the Federal Armory in Harpers Ferry, Virginia. However, Douglas disapproved of John Brown's plan to start an armed slave rebellion in the South. 
Douglas believed that attacking federal property would enrage the American public. After the raid, Douglas fled for a time to Canada, fearing guilt by association as well as arrest as a co-conspirator. By the time of the American Civil War, Douglas was one of the most famous black men in the country, known for his orations on the condition of the black race and other issues such as women's rights. Douglas and the abolitionists argued that because the aim of the American Civil War was to end slavery, black Americans should be allowed to engage in the fight for their freedom. Douglas publicized this view in his newspapers and several speeches. Douglas conferred with President Abraham Lincoln in 1863 on the treatment of black soldiers. With the North no longer obliged to return slaves to their owners in the South, Douglas fought for equality for his people. He made plans with Lincoln to move liberated slaves out of the South. During the war, Douglas also helped the Union by serving as a recruiter for the 54th Massachusetts Infantry Regiment. On April 14, 1876, Douglas delivered the keynote speech at the unveiling of the Emancipation Memorial in Washington's Lincoln Park. In that speech, Douglas spoke frankly about Lincoln, noting what he perceived as both positive and negative attributes of the late president. Douglas criticized Lincoln's tardiness in joining the cause of emancipation, noting that Lincoln initially opposed the expansion of slavery but did not support its elimination. After the American Civil War, Douglas continued to work for equality for blacks and women. Due to his prominence and activism during the war, Douglas received several political appointments. He served as president of the Reconstruction Era Freedmen's Savings Bank. Douglas supported the presidential campaign of Ulysses S. Grant in 1868. President Grant sent a congressional sponsored commission, accompanied by Douglas, on a mission to the West Indies to investigate if the annexation of Santo Domingo would be good for the United States. Grant believed annexation would help relieve the violent situation in the South, allowing black Americans their own state. Douglas and the commission favored annexation. However, Congress remained opposed to annexation. In 1872, Douglas became the first black American nominated for vice president of the United States as Victoria Woodhull's running mate on the Equal Rights Party ticket. He was nominated without his knowledge, though. Douglas neither campaigned for the ticket nor acknowledged that he had been nominated. When Republican Rutherford B. Hayes was elected president, Douglas accepted an appointment as United States Marshal for the District of Columbia which helped assure his family's financial security. Also in 1877, Douglas visited Thomas Old, who was by then on his deathbed, and the two men reconciled. The visit also appears to have brought closure to Douglas. In 1881, Douglas published the final edition of his autobiography, The Life and Times of Frederick Douglas. However, Anna Murray Douglas died in 1882, leaving the widower devastated. Douglas married again in 1884 to Helen Pitts, a white feminist from Honeyo, New York. The marriage provoked a storm of controversy, since Pitts was both white and nearly 20 years younger than Douglas. His children considered the marriage a disrespect to their mother. Douglas responded to the criticism by saying that his first marriage had been to someone of color of his mother, and the second to someone the color of his father. At the 1888 Republican National Convention, Douglas became the first black American to receive a vote for President of the United States in a major party's roll call vote. President Harrison appointed Douglas to be the United States Minister of Resident and Consul General to the Republic of Haiti and charged the affairs of Santo Domingo in 1889, but Douglas resigned the commission in July 1891. In 1892, Douglas constructed rental housing for blacks now known as Douglas Place in the Fells Point area of Baltimore. The complex still exists and in 2003 was listed on the National Register of Historic Places. On February 20th, 1895, Douglas attended a meeting of the National Council for Women in Washington, D.C. During that meeting, he was brought to the platform and received a standing ovation. Shortly after he returned home, Frederick Douglass died of a massive heart attack or a stroke. Died of a massive heart attack or stroke. He was 77 at the time. His funeral was held at the Metropolitan African Methodist Episcopal Church. Thousands passed by his coffin to show their respect, although Douglas had attended several churches in the national capital. He had a pew there. Douglas's coffin was transported back to Rochester, New York. He was buried next to Anna in the Douglas family plot at Mount Hope Cemetery, and Helen joined him in 1903.